Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on the gastrointestinal tract. Okay, so uh, in this video what we're going to discuss is the secretion of gastric acid. Okay, so we're going to discuss gastric acid secretion. Okay, so uh, the plan for this video then, what we're going to start off with is we're going to start off with uh, the anatomy of the stomach and the histology of the stomach wall. Okay, then what we're going to turn our attention to is how uh, hydrochloric acid is actually secreted by the parietal cells uh, of the stomach wall. Okay, then what we want to turn our attention to is what regulates the secretion of hydrochloric acid uh, by these parietal cells. So we want to look at gastrin cells and their secretion of gastrin and the enterochromaffin-like cells which uh, secrete histamine onto the parietal cells. We also want to look at uh, vagal input onto the parietal cells. Okay, right. So we'll start off then with the uh, anatomy of the stomach then. Okay, so let's start with the esophagus up here. Okay, so here's the esophagus coming down like so, and then uh, it joins with the stomach. So here then is the stomach, and the stomach is sort of in this sort of a shape here. Okay, comes down like that and then it goes into uh, the small intestine and the first portion of the small intestine is the duodenum. Okay, but between the stomach and the duodenum you have a special sphincter uh, which I'll colour in here called, um, I'll colour it in blue, called the pyloric sphincter or just the pylorus. Okay, which is a thickening in the circular smooth muscle surrounding uh, this um, tube, basically. And this thickening of the smooth muscle allows it to contract and constrict the entire lumen, so it effectively uh, forms a gate which can open and close. Okay, so this is the pyloric sphincter here. Now you have another sphincter between the esophagus and the stomach as well, so let me draw another one of these up here. Okay, so in blue up here we have another one of these sphincters uh, between the esophagus and uh, the stomach, and this is known as the gastroesophageal sphincter. Okay, so this gastro means uh, pertaining to the stomach, and then esophageal clearly means pertaining to the esophagus, so it's the sphincter that is between the stomach and the esophagus. So gastroesophageal sphincter. Okay, right, so let's just discuss some more uh, bits of terminology for the stomach. So the stomach is divided into three separate regions, okay? So the portion of the stomach up here, the portion that is furthest away from the pylorus, uh, is called the fundus, okay? So this is the fundus of the stomach up here that I've highlighted in red, okay? This main portion in the middle, which I'm now going to highlight in vivid purple here, okay? This is the body of the stomach, okay? So this is the stomach body, the main portion of the stomach, and then the portion near the pylorus down here, which I'll now highlight in turquoise, uh, this is called the antrum of the stomach. Okay, and these divisions are actually going to be important when we come to discuss uh, gastric acid secretion because it's the body of the stomach that secretes uh, gastric acid rather than the antrum. Okay, uh, that will be important because it's actually the antrum that's going to release the gastrin which will control the secretion of uh, gastric acid by the body of the stomach. So it's the body of the stomach rather than the antrum and the fundus which secrete the gastric acid. Okay, uh, and there will be loads of glands in this portion which will be secreting that gastric acid. Okay, so, uh, a little bit more terminology then. This portion here, this curve in the wall of the stomach here, this is known as the lesser curvature of the stomach. Okay, so this is the lesser curvature. Okay, and on this side we also have a much bigger curve here, less curvy obviously, this bit's more uh, a, a steeper curve, but this one is a bigger curve. Okay, so this side of the stomach is known as the greater curvature of the stomach. Okay, so that's the name for 
all of this, so this entire side here, which I'm now highlighting in orange, this is the greater curvature of the stomach. Okay, and I think I'll do a similar highlighting for the lesser curvature as well. So I won't do it in pink, I'll do it in green. Okay, so this portion here, this is the lesser curvature of the stomach. Okay, right, so there's the anatomy of the stomach. Uh, now let's discuss uh, the structure of the wall of the stomach, because this is going to be very, very important uh, for uh, understanding gastric acid secretion. So, if I was a little man standing in the lumen of a stomach, what would I see if I actually looked at the wall of the stomach? Well, basically, I would see a picture that looks like this, okay? This is what the surface of the wall of the stomach that faces into the lumen would look like. It would be smooth and then basically you'd have these holes in it. You'd have these little invaginations dotted all over the place basically like so. Okay, and these invaginations are known as gastric pits. Okay, so what we're now going to do is we're going to imagine taking a cross section through the gastric wall. So imagine cutting the gastric wall, taking a pair of scissors, if you like, and cutting through the gastric wall and seeing what we will see. Now, I've cut at a rather boring place here, so let me change where I'll cut now. Let's cut here so that we're cutting right through one of these gastric pits. And now I'm going to turn this up and have a look uh, from this side, basically. I'm going to look at the different layers, basically. Okay, so what will I see? Well, let's draw this picture here. Okay, so basically, what you will see is something that looks like this. Here is uh, the, um, well, the epithelium, which faces into the lumen. So at the moment, I'm talking about this portion here. So this, let me highlight things up so that it's clear. This portion represents this portion here. Okay, and now it's suddenly going to invaginate in where the gastric pit is. So we're now going into the gastric pit. So the epithelium will invaginate in, and then at the bottom it will invaginate even further. So let me show this. So what you'll get is pits within the pit, basically. Okay, so this portion here, let me just finish this up. Right, so let me make sure that everyone understands where we are on this picture. This portion in pink here is this portion here, and then this is the gastric pit that we can see there. Now, this portion that I'm highlighting in blue here, this is the portion that will be called a gastric pit. Okay, so this here, this is the gastric pit. And of course, this portion represents this portion in the middle here. Okay, now these little invaginations that we have going down beyond the gastric pit, these are called gastric glands. So let me highlight them in a certain color. So in bright green here, these further invaginations down into the wall of the stomach, away from the lumen, these are called gastric glands. Okay, right. Now what I need to do is I need to make the epithelial cells, um, well, I need to turn them from being a line into having some finite thickness. So what I'm going to do is correct my drawing now. I'm going to give these uh, epithelial cells which line uh, the intestine I'm going to give them a thickness, basically, rather than just representing them as a single line, which was good, but it has its flaws. Okay, right. So, I'm just correcting my image now. So, basically, the stomach is lined by epithelial cells, and these epithelial cells are columnar epithelial cells. So let me split this into separate little cells here. Okay, and all over you'll have these columnar epithelial cells. And what these columnar epithelial cells do is they secrete mucus, okay? Uh, they secrete a quite thick mucus that they put onto their surface. So let me just write what they are somewhere. Okay, so these are columnar epithelial cells, okay? And they produce mucus. And the purpose of this mucus is to protect the columnar epithelial cells from the extremely acidic pH of the lumen of the stomach. Okay, so the pH of the lumen of the stomach is usually around 1 to 2, basically. It's around 1 to 2. 
Okay, that is an extremely low pH. It means that it's extremely acidic. Okay, so bear in mind that normal physiological body. Uh, physiological pHs are usually around 7.5 or somewhere there around, okay? Going down to a pH of 1, what that actually entails is multiplying uh, the concentration of protons uh, by around 1 million, okay? So remember the definition of pH. pH is equal to negative log uh, of the concentration of protons, okay? So, basically, in order to get the number to go down from around 7.5 to, let's say, 1.5, to make the maths easy, we have gone for a change of around 6. Now, how much would we need to change uh, the proton concentration to get it from a pH of 7.5 down to a pH of 1.5? Well, let's do this, okay? Let's do a little calculation. So, if the pH is 1.5, what does that mean? That means that if I take 10 to the power of negative 1.5, I will get the proton concentration, okay? That's what this statement here means, because if I just multiply both sides by negative 1, I'll get the negative of the pH is equal to log of the proton concentration. And what does log mean? Well, this is log to base 10. Okay, so what this means is what power would I have to raise 10 to to get the proton concentration? Okay, but if that's negative pH, then if I take 10 to the power of the negative pH, then I'll get the proton concentration. Okay, so this is the proton concentration in the stomach, basically. And what's the normal proton concentration for, let's say, the plasma, okay, well, that will be 10 to the negative 7.5, okay, so how much bigger is 10, uh, is the um, stomach proton concentration compared to the uh, plasma proton concentration? Well, I can ask how much bigger, which just means uh, what number would I have to multiply this by to turn it into that? Well, all I need to do is take this, divide it by this, Okay, to find out how much bigger the stomach p uh, proton concentration is than the plasma proton concentration. And when I divide 10 to the negative 1.5 by uh, 10 to the negative 7.5, okay, uh, what will I get? Well, I'll get 10 to the power of 6, i.e. a million, basically. So, the proton concentration in the stomach is around a million times bigger than the proton concentration in the uh, plasma, basically. Okay, so, there is an extremely high uh, proton concentration in the lumen of the stomach, basically. Now, these um, columnar epithelial cells, which line uh, the surface of the stomach, these are going to be exposed to this extremely high proton concentration, this extremely low pH environment, okay? So to protect themselves from this, what they do is they secrete mucus onto their apical surface, which just means their surface which faces into uh, the lumen of the stomach, okay? and. Basically, this mucus will protect them from uh, the extremely acidic pH. It will provide, if you like, a buffer zone, okay? And uh, also, the way they keep the mucus at a much higher pH than in the lumen of the stomach, and I'll just say this. Basically, the lumen of the stomach has this pH between 1 and 2. The pH of the mucus that is on the surface of the uh, epithelial cells will be between 6 and 7. Now, how do they maintain it at that pH? Well, basically, what they do is they secrete bicarbonate anions into the mucus, basically. So, if we've got our uh, epithelial cell here, Okay, it's secreting mucus onto its surface here. So we'll have mucus on the surface of the epithelial cell. And it will also put into that mucus bicarbonate anions. Okay, and the symbol for bicarbonate anions is HCO3. So this is bicarbonate anion. Okay, now let me show you the molecular formula uh, for a bicarbonate anion. Okay, so. Basically, what you have is a carbon atom at the centre, doubly bound to an oxygen, 
and then you have an alcohol group coming off this, like so, with another oxygen bound to this carbon. Now, this other oxygen here, uh, this isn't saturated yet. It's only got one covalent bond with this carbon. Oxygen has six outer shell electrons, okay, so it needs to gain two more. By forming this covalent bond with carbon, basically what the oxygen has done is it's put one of its electrons into a sort of sharing agreement with another electron from the carbon. So the carbon's put one electron into this bond, the oxygen's put one electron into this bond, and they're sharing them. Okay, so the oxygen has effectively gained one electron then. Okay, so it's now got seven, but it's still not happy. It needs eight. So what's going to happen is it's going to gain another electron by a uh, ionic mean, basically. Okay, so it's got a negative charge. It's nicked an electron from something, in effect. Okay, and that's why the whole molecule then has a negative charge. Okay, so this is a very effective base, basically. Now, what's the definition of a base? Well, the definition of a base is a chemical species which is capable of accepting protons. Okay, so a chemical species which can take protons that are free in solution and uh, will basically bind to them. Okay, uh, so the reason that this is such a good base is that protons can come and bind to this negatively charged oxygen atom here, and what they will create is a covalent bond between the hydrogen and the oxygen. Okay, so what will happen is you'll get this molecule being formed. Okay, so when a proton comes and associates with this oxygen, it will form a covalent bond with the oxygen where the oxygen provides both electrons in. Okay, and uh, basically the oxygen will have given an electron away to the proton. That will have neutralized the positive charge on the proton, but by giving away an electron, the oxygen will have also lost its negative charge. So what you'll then have is an alcohol group here, a normal alcohol group. Now, this structure here is carbonic acid. So basically, bicarbonate anions can gain protons to become carbonic acid. So, this is the advantage to putting bicarbonate anions in the uh, mucus that you are secreting. Basically, if free protons wander into this mucus, they will end up being bound, well, end up getting bound to the bicarbonate anions to form carbonic acid. Okay, so you won't therefore have any more free protons. Remember, pH is a measure of the concentration of free protons. Okay, so if the proton is now bound in this molecule, it's no longer free. It is the free protons that are dangerous to the cell, not protons that are, you know, mopped up by bicarbonate anions. Okay, so don't be confused by the fact that we are calling this an acid. Yes, it's an acid because it's capable of donating a proton away. In principle, this proton can break off again and be returned to this. Uh, but the pH is a measure of the free proton concentration, not the not a measure of the concentration of acid molecules. So you don't need to count the carbonic acid uh, molecules in uh, this calculation of pH. Okay, right. Uh, so, that's how we protect ourselves against the uh, free protons. Okay, right. So, we'll continue this discussion in the next video.